hello everybody so how are you i hope you're taking good care of your physical and mental health as always i'm taking care of mine so today still in the line of mental health i want us to have a story time are you ready for it let's get into it <music> Before I go to the agenda of the day, let me say this. If the only mental health facility you have been able to access is Mathare, you will have reservations about mental health facilities. Um, some years back, uh, was it two or three, you know, I happened to visit the the area where mental health patients are admitted at my at uh, Magare, and this was because a friend of mine rescued a lady from the streets, a lady who had lost touch with the reality. So, uh, we got her admitted there, and when we went for a visit, uh, it was so scary because these people are coming to you; they want to touch you. You know, they are aggressive. So when you meet such things, when you encounter such, you will not even want to visit a mental health facility for any reason. Uh, before I, I, I proceed, let me talk a little bit about this particular lady. So she used to be somewhere, she used to hang around a, 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 a very popular stage in town. And uh, my friend had been visiting her, giving her food, you know, so... They got familiar and my friend had intentions of go, taking her to Madhari so that she can get help. She went to Madhari, she was told, for you to admit a patient here, you need 10,000 shillings. So my friend had that money. But before now, we would get this lady from the streets. We needed backup from police, you know. You cannot just pick somebody from the street and take them. What, what if they they start acting up and you're accused of kidnapping somebody. So my friend went to the OCS at Central Police Station and she was given uh, some other police, police officers to go and help her in getting that lady from the streets. They take her to Madari. The process is done so fast. Yeah, and the lady is admitted. My friend pays, I think she paid only a thousand shillings, you know maybe buying that lady milk and stuff like that what we learned on this day is that if uh, a mental health patient or a mental case is admit taken to Mabatri by police officers all the charges are wavered and this is something we don't know and that is why so many people are out in the streets just walking around and not getting help because we believe maybe there's nothing we can do there's no way we can help them if you want that person to be helped go to a police station and get their help follow the right procedure you'll be surprised that you won't even spend so much and you you also learn that so many people can get help if we just make the initiative big up to my friend for that bold move and uh, i'm happy to inform that Later on, the lady was reunited with her mother. Yes. So that aside. Sometime this year, I happened to visit a mental health facility. Not Madare, but a very decent mental health facility. Um, which, which, when I say decent, I mean decent. Because even the amount you pay there is not kidogo you spent you spent for a month you can even spend close to half a million so this is the kind of mental health facility i'm referring to so i happened to visit this, this facility and as i approached there I, I i i had this feeling me maybe <sighs> about the people i will meet there maybe i thought this is a facility for people who have also lost touch with the reality completely and that is the perception of so many people but I get in here and you meet normal people, you know, you meet people, people who have positions in these 
in many organizations in this country you meet lawyers you meet you meet even doctors you meet lecturers you meet students who are in school but due to one reason or another they are in here so on a second day of visiting this this, this facility there's this lady who walked to me i don't know i don't know how uh, I don't know the kind of um, face I was showing the world. I don't know what she saw on my face, but she came and gave me a rose flower. I said, hi, this is for you. That really warmed my heart. And then this lady sat next to me. She asked me, are you a patient here? I said, no, I'm just visiting. Then I asked her, are you a patient? She said, Yes, I am. I've been here for two weeks and I'm so happy that I've gotten the help. And next week I'll be discharged. Here I'm so happy that I, I, I found a home. This is even way better than home away from home. This is a real home for me because here I meet people who understand me who understand my feelings who know the right language to address me in who are able to feel what i'm going through because some of them have been in that situation and that hit me hard because out here we are in a, a world in a space where we're just full of judgment we're just judging people we see people doing things we don't really want to understand why they're doing them we want to judge their actions we don't really want to understand why they are doing these things the way they are doing them so we had a lengthy talk and um yeah when i went there again i met her and we were sitting on this table where they were having a conversation amongst themselves and they felt comfortable to speak in my presence about their encounters with the disorders these uh, a guy who who had uh, schizophrenia and he said something he said that sometimes when it hits you know he feels suicidal and sometimes he sleeps with a knife in his bed um, this condition leads him to do crazy things before he was brought to this facility the first time he went to smoke in a police station. He didn't feel like he was doing anything wrong. The limb show and I'll put a bang at the police station. As he was smoking, he, it didn't even last him like five minutes. He was arrested. Had it not been for his father, who happens to be part of the police force, he would have rotten in jail, you know, for smoking in the police station, for, for doing an illegal activity. No one would have cared to understand that this person is not okay. This person needs medical attention. This person needs attention of a specialist, of a mental health specialist. And this got me thinking how many people are suffering out here because they don't have somebody who can speak for them, somebody who understands whatever they are going through. Yeah, but it's just his story. This same guy told us that there's a friend of his who called the police and told them that he had been kidnapped. So the po police traced the area of kidnapping through his phone, you know. You know that uh, all these things can be traced. So he was traced and the police surrounded the area. So when they got to the house, they knocked and the sister opened was like okay what's going on they say um we've received a call from this house that from this location this particular location that somebody has been kidnapped the sister tells them that is the person who made the call <laughs> and he's sitting there <laughs> some of the police were like that wow this person is not okay that is how this guy is taken to the police station now back to Eva. Eva was 
was feeling that people are watching him he was feeling he had a feeling that there were cctv cameras everywhere watching him every movement of hers sorry not him her people are watching every movement of hers and she felt that she was not safe so what did she do as a responsible citizen you'll go to a police station you'll go you'll report to an authority that you are not safe you are being followed and your life is in danger she goes to a police station and reports to the OCS. I'm not safe. I'm being followed. Someone is um, all my movements are being watched. So he sent she sent away from the police station. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Back to the house, like she's feeling that uh, the air has been contaminated. She was smelling blood everywhere, you know, even in milk. She could smell blood in milk. So she got to a point that she made a concoction for herself you know she made a concoction for herself and then she would dip um she would dip a rag in that concoction and then cover her nose because she was like she was not feeling self she was feeling like somebody was trying to uh, was after her life and was trying to kill her where it all blew up and the mother knew that wow it's happening again it's happening again was when this girl covered all like all the anything that looked like a, like a camera in the house she covered it and then she took a cellar type of black one and covered all the cameras on her phone that is when her mama realized what we need to take her to hospital yeah so apparently she has a condition called bipolar but when you hear bipolar what do you think he's a crazy person this is a person who has a double personality and sometimes we love using this word on people we love misusing this term on people like when somebody overreacts or somebody just snaps we brand them bipolar and we maybe we don't really understand the seriousness of bipolar but those who understand it will tell we will be able to understand that it's something that happens to people it's not it does not make them abnormal it does not make them different from us the only difference is that they, they need med medication for them to remain sane they need that medication for that uh, situation to be controlled they need medication for them not to relapse again get and they're not supposed to do some things yeah so that is story that is the story of my friend and while i was she was she was discharged later but we happened to exchange contacts we gelled that much and even sometimes we talk on whatsapp you know she's somebody who loves encouragement so much yeah she loves the word of god she is the last time I spoke, she was pursuing environment science, and I'm hoping that she is done. Maybe due to the COVID situation, she was not able to uh, progress with her studies the way she expected, you know, because she was supposed to complete her studies this year and then graduate. But we know what COVID did. Yeah. So, yeah, she's a brilliant girl. Aside from this condition that she she has accepted her situation and i wish that people around her would learn to accept it but we all know mental health situations are beyond the common eye of of a common person unless somebody explains this thing deeply to you unless now you visit uh, a place where we have several of them unless now you come into you encounter these situations maybe you won't be able to understand maybe you won't have um the urge to learn these things the urge to understand them but these things happen to people they can happen to people close to you maybe that friend of yours who is drinking so much who is drinking non-stop Maybe they are 
they are uh, they have these conditions maybe their depression has graduated into something else maybe they are suffering from schizophrenia maybe they are hallucinating because they they that that those disorders need attention so always be keen about the people around you always learn the people close to you to the point that when they have these drastic changes in them you are able to tell it out and help them get help because the mental health patients or the mental health cases around us they won't be a won't be able to tell on their own that they have a problem remember you are dealing with people who have two realities with mental health cases you can have a conversation with them you can have a great conversation you can even come to a consensus but the only difference is they have another reality that is not same as yours they have two realities they have the actual reality and the reality that is in their head the reality that is trying to get them away from the situation they are going through like the hallucinations that is another reality that is trying to that has been created in the mind to try and shelve them from these um stressful situations they are going through so if you are able to understand them you can help them out you can get them to, you can get them help from a mental health specialist you can get him you can get them proper help by you even going for counseling on how to deal with them because sometimes we make their situation worse when we judge them when you try to make them realize that no it's not the way you are putting it we try to make them feel bad about themselves so we <clears throat> the same people we with good mental health we need to reach out to those who are, whose mental health has been compromised we need to make their problem our problem we need to understand that they can get help only if we those people who have good mental health can reach out to them and help them seek the help no, no mental health patient will openly admit that they have a problem sometimes you'll have to force them to go there sometimes you'll have to use malicious ways to get there i'm not when i say malicious it sounds like it's a terrible thing you're doing sometimes you might you might have them sedated for them to be carried to the mental health facility because they don't know they have the problem they don't know they are not okay when they're speaking to uhuru that is progress in their life when they are speaking to maybe the president of the United States of America, that is great progress in their life. That you cannot get them out of it just like that. They will not do it voluntarily. Some of them might might have to get um electroconvulsive therapy, ECT, for that for those broadcasting episodes to be gotten out of their heads completely, you know. So let, let's not take uh, situations lightly. Let's not be judgmental towards the people around us when we start seeing some changes in them, when maybe they start drinking more than they used to, when they stop caring about the activities they used to care about, when they stop giving a damn about their professions. Let's not judge them. We are a judgmental society, and unfortunately, through our judgment, we make the situations worse. Let's stop being so judgmental and help, help them get the help. You know we are christians some of us are christians and we we cannot condone alcoholism but let's not use the christianity approach to condemn these people let's use the approach of love to ensure that they get help yes so I'm hoping that you're going to be so vigilant about those who are around you and you're also going to be vigilant about your own health, you know. You're going to be vigilant about the things happening around you. You will live when things are, when the respect is not being served anymore. You will, leave, you will get out of that job when it's becoming so stressful for you. You will leave that relationship when the only thing you can do every day is quarrel and hate each other 
you will choose you and you will choose your mental health your good mental health to avoid getting into situations that might and uh, that might move your life some steps back so as always let's keep doing good let's keep loving ourselves more and let's remember that let's remember that love comes from a source where there is love so for you to love others you're gonna have to love yourself more so i love you so much and have a blessed time Mwah.